We are getting into some controversial topics, so I'm about to get sweatier. How we discipline our kids, whether or not we spank, require obedience not after the 17th time of asking, but after the first time of asking. This might be personal, but how is your libido postpartum? When it comes to screen time, I definitely do have limits in our house. There were definitely a few moments where Jared and I looked at each other like, we could be done. Like, this could be the end of it. There are a couple of moments where I've just been like, oh, it would be really nice if we were still able to breastfeed. Hello you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Beth and I make videos all about motherhood and lifestyle. And today we are doing a little bit of a, I guess what is long overdue q and I kept feeling like I had done a QA and a recently and then I went back and looked at it and I haven't done one since like right after baby number three was born, which was like six months ago now and that is insane. So I put a question box up on Instagram and got a ton of questions from you guys, the most questions I've ever received and tried to pare it down down to the most consistent like themes and topics and we've got some juicy ones in here we've got some good just like informative ones in here so we are going to dive into all of your guys questions today because there are so many I'm gonna try and go relatively quickly I'm sorry if I'm like speaking a little bit faster in this video I just also have a baby napping right now and I want to try and get through as many of these as I can so the first question is how do you juggle three kids homeschool cooking and housework right off the top I just want to level set on the home homeschool thing because I feel like that can be something that people see and think is like this crazy overwhelming thing. Also, I'm sorry if the lighting changes like dramatically over the course of this video because I am sitting directly beside a window and there are clouds in the sky. But when it comes to the homeschool thing, you guys have to remember that my kids are doing like preschool homeschool. We are doing very light and play inspired lessons that are ranging anywhere from like 15 minutes to one hour a day. So it's not like homeschool is taking up this like huge chunk of my time every day. I just have to say that for anyone that thinks that like my whole day with my kids right now is homeschool. But when it does come to that and the kids and do housework and cooking and all of that stuff, I would say that I manage it by having certain routines in place and like certain times every day that I do certain things. For example, there are certain times every day that I kind of go into cleaning mode and in between those times, I'm not necessarily like hyper-focused on cleaning. I'm more so focused on whatever is at hand, whether that is taking care of the kids or cooking a meal. I I also think that something that is really helpful is just involving your kids in what you are doing. My husband was telling me about this thing he heard the other day where there are like different types of families. You can have a parent focused family where everything is still kind of like focused on what you guys are doing as parents and you just bring your kids into that. You can have a kid focused family where you kind of just drop everything. It's all about the kids. It's all about their extracurriculars and like making life work for them. Or you can have a family focused family where everyone's needs are prioritized and recognized but in certain seasons, other things are going to be more important than others. I feel like we are a family focused family where there are certain times of the day and certain things in our lives in general that are really there and in place to help support and encourage and equip our kids. But at the same time, I'm like not entertaining my kids all day long. They are doing a lot of independent play. They are playing with each other a lot. And I also do invite them into what I am doing a lot of the day. So when I make meals, almost always my kids are right there with me involved in the process, cracking eggs at breakfast, helping me get things prepped for dinner. So I do feel like that helps our house to run like more of a well-oiled machine because they are working with me to help forward the goals of our entire family throughout the day. And speaking of systems, someone did ask what systems do you have in place to get everything done? This could be a whole YouTube video in and of itself, but some of the things that I wrote down are like cleaning as I go, doing a load of laundry every single day. I am constantly decluttering. So basically every single time I finish a round of decluttering and donating, I pull out a new bag and I will declutter as I go pretty well every day. I have a weekly meal planning system. I have a grocery ordering system. And so those are just a couple of the things that help to keep our house kind of functioning on a week by week basis. I got a couple of questions about Rosie and how she is doing, if she has started solids and basically just like how I start solids with my babies in general. So the very quick update on Rosie is that she is doing so, so much better. I don't even have words to describe how much better she is doing. Doing. I feel like now that we are out of the thick of her having really severe colic and reflux that I am realizing even just to a greater extent how hard what we were dealing with was. Now when there are moments throughout the day where she will cry a lot for whatever reason, I'm just like, oh my gosh, we used to do this 24 seven with her. She is a much happier baby now. She is no longer on reflux medication. She has kind of like outgrown 
on that and we did a very slow weaning process over time to help her just kind of get used to not being on it anymore and that was always my goal because i never wanted her to be on medication long term um, we were never able to get back into breastfeeding and i will share some more thoughts on that a little bit later in the video but mostly because one of the primary reasons that i transitioned away from breastfeeding is because my milk was waking her quite sick and we could never figure out exactly why or what i was eating that she was reacting to i did have a good supply and she was getting enough breast milk but unfortunately because of whatever she was allergic to in my milk she was losing weight from how much she was vomiting combined with all the reflux but anyway we've had her on hypoallergenic formula for months now rosie is a much happier baby she is gaining weight she is meeting milestones and we have also started solids with her as well so i do have a video all about baby led weaning and how to start that at six months and that is what we are doing with rosie as well doing baby led weaning doesn't necessarily need to mean all or nothing if you are feeling like kind of anxious about it but i will link a video about how i start that with my babies here do you have a schedule with three kids when i first read that i wanted to say no because our days often do have quite a bit of flexibility and variability to them but then i thought about it very critically and i do have a schedule that we follow almost every single day i will put a little screenshot here of kind of the overview of what that looks like but essentially almost every day our kids wake at some point between 6 a.m to 7 30. there's been a lot of variation in that recently especially with the time change but they are usually always up somewhere in that time and i have either gotten up with jared before that or we both just sleep in together and wake up with them depending on how the night went and from whatever time they wake up to about 8 a.m i would say that generally what we're doing is like cuddling reading books or playing and then usually around 8 a.m i will switch over into breakfast prep mode and getting everyone fed for the day at some point between 8 and 9 we will sit at the table and eat breakfast and do our devotions together and generally around 9 a.m rosie will go for her first nap of the day and i will start school with the kids more so with our oldest toddler but our middle child is very involved in the process as well i usually allocate 9 to 10 a.m for school knowing that it's going to be somewhere between like 30 to 45 minutes and leaving myself some buffer time and then sometime around 10 a.m we will either go outside and play all together or we will do some sort of outing either to a park or a play date with a friend or to the library things like that sometime between 12 and 12 30 i will make and give the kids lunch and usually do another read aloud with them at that point and then from 1 to 3 p.m we have quiet time in our house so all three of our kids are in different rooms for that and this is also when i get my work done from the day so i'll catch up on emails i'll do some editing i will maybe film or a lot of the times i'm literally just even cleaning up our house usually between three and four we are just playing again or doing like a craft together or something like that and then usually around 4 p.m. every day, I transition into dinner prep. A lot of the time, our kids actually participate in that with me. Around 5 p.m., Jared gets home, so we will eat dinner together as a family shortly after that, and then our evening kind of depends on what's going on. So we are either home and hanging out as a family or going out for some sort of like church thing in the evening, and then bedtime for our kids is usually sometime between 7 and 8, so I feel like I do have a schedule. Someone asked, you mentioned looking for a different method of family planning slash BC. I think that's birth control did you end up landing on something yes I did I have finally landed on what I think is going to be the perfect solution for me for the long term I did a ton of research on this and I actually asked a lot of you guys for your opinions as well and the resounding answer that I just kept getting from people over and over again was natural cycles so thanks to you guys I am now also a natural cycles user and have been for a little while now and I am so excited it is such an honor because I'm actually working with them on this video as well. If you have never heard of Natural Cycles before, it is an FDA cleared birth control app. So it is a completely hormone-free, non-invasive way of preventing, planning, or simply just recovering from pregnancy naturally. Basically how it works is the app's algorithm will analyze hormone-driven fluctuations in your body temperature, and then it will use that to help you determine your current fertility status. And one of the cool things about Natural Cycles is that it works with a number of different measuring devices. Right now, I'm actually actually just using the natural cycles thermometer that you can get when you sign up for the app, but it also works with integrated wearables. So I do have an aura ring in the mail and I am very excited about that because natural cycles has partnered with them to make the process even more seamless. But even just using the natural cycles thermometer, I have already had a much better experience with natural family planning. The app is so easy to use. It is jam packed with information. So I feel like even the person that is entering into natural family planning or non-hormonal
hormonal birth control that is kind of feeling overwhelmed or like they don't really know what they're doing could figure it out real quickly using the natural cycles app because they do offer so much educational content on there the other thing that has been so helpful is the fact that you can track so many different parameters outside of just your body temperature so you can track things like dare i say cervical mucus bloating changes to your mood to your sex drive to your skin whether you are breaking out or not so it's a very comprehensive way to just keep track of where you are at and really become in tune with your body you can use the app to plan for pregnancy to prevent pregnancy or even just to get a better understanding of your own menstrual cycle i am currently using it as a natural way to prevent pregnancy because i think we all know that my body needs a little bit of recovery time here and so every single morning first thing that i do is measure my temperature and then put it into the natural cycles app and it will tell me whether it is a green day where i am not fertile and ready to go or if it is a red day and i need to use some sort of additional protection i think a lot of people are shocked when they hear that there are only like six days in your cycle that you can actually get pregnant and when it comes to preventing pregnancy natural cycles is 93 percent effective with typical use and 98 percent effective with perfect use i've shared a little bit about this in the past but i just had a terrible experience using hormonal birth control pills and i think it's so important that we do have options for women that are non-hormonal and actually allow women to learn about the way that their bodies work and to take charge of that so i honestly have to say thank you to you guys because i am so grateful that you helped us land on this solution when it comes to family planning for our family in this season of life and if you are also interested in testing out natural cycles whether that is for planning pregnancy preventing or again just tracking your period they do have an offer for viewers of my channel so if you head to the link in the description box of this video and use the code beth at checkout you can get 15 percent off of an annual subscription with natural cycles and they will also provide you guys with a free thermometer to get started again the link for that is in the description box and you use that code beth to save 15 percent as well as get that free thermometer so thank you guys so much for all of your recommendations and thank you to natural cycles for working with me on today's video how do you manage to get yourself and family out of the house i find it so difficult for me there are a few key things that make this so much simpler one of them is having a very well stocked and well prepared diaper bag i'm talking diapers for every kid change of clothes for every kid water bottle snack you basically just have to think through every possible crisis moment that could happen and what you would need to navigate that crisis and then over time those things just kind of exist in your diaper bag and you just have to keep making sure that they're there before you head out so the diaper bag is key the other thing that has been so key for me in getting out of the house has been having a great stroller system i talk about it all the time but the up a baby vista is what we got before we had our first baby and it is so great because i can get at least two of my kids on that stroller sometimes three because my oldest will like sit in the little basket underneath i will say that though that working yourself up to like a certain level of public spaces is also helpful the first time that i left the house with all three i literally just went to like a wide open field where they could run in any direction and it would not be a problem and not have like any sort of danger involved and i feel like when you're working on obedience and listening skills and things like that going to places that you know are safer is the way to go until you've kind of like developed a pattern of obedience and also your own confidence in having them out of the house and then the other thing that is really helpful is just sharing your expectations with your kids about what you want their behavior to look like before you actually arrive somewhere so oftentimes we will have a little team rally in the car before we get out of the van where i will say like hey here's where we're going here's what mama is expecting of you i need you to stay with me when we're in the parking lot we are holding hands and then i have my kids like say yes that they've heard me that they understand what i'm expecting of them and then whatever happens while we are out happens but when we get back in the van if i need to i will debrief on what happened we had some behavioral issues while we were out we will debrief that in the van and kind of talk about what went wrong what i expected from them and what i expect to see next time or if they do an awesome job i'll thank them and be like you guys were so amazing while we were there you listened to mommy we stayed together all of these things so i feel like having conversation with your kids about what you want the time to look like is also really important someone asked how do you get your kids to sleep by themselves and what are your thoughts on co-sleeping i am not against co-sleeping it's not something that we have done with our kids for any like really long periods of time i would say from like the first zero to six months we do quite a bit of 
co-sleeping because we do have our babies in a bedside bassinet that makes co-sleeping a lot safer but even still there are times that I will bring the baby right into our bed and ended up doing that a lot with Rosie in the night when she was crying because she was up like every 15-20 minutes I am sure as heck not walking back and forth from a nursery back to my room when that is happening but we don't co-sleep long term just because beyond the first six months my husband and I do really appreciate having our room and our bed kind of be just like for us if you can follow the safe sleep seven which I will put more information about in the description box of this video I think that you can enjoy co-sleeping and then it can actually be like really cozy and beneficial for your family so I'm definitely not against it but I wouldn't say that we are like a co-sleeping family three of our kids I have used the same kind of sleep principles to help encourage independent sleep and I am not an advocate for cry it out methods although I do not pass judgment on to you if you are but we prefer to just focus on a few other things one of them being the sleep environment and trying to make that pretty consistent for our kids I also really focus on wake windows because if you are trying to put a baby to sleep that is undertired or overtired you're probably not going to have a lot of success eating is also very important and making sure that your baby is getting enough calories in before sleep so that they're not waking up because of hunger and then outside of that I think just paying very close attention to your baby's sleep cues whether they are rubbing their eyes or their face is looking red or they're just getting more irritable so those are some of the sleep habits that I focus on while my kids are babies and I feel like they just kind of grow into sleep habits and patterns as they advance into toddlerhood there's going to be seasons where they sleep well there's going to be seasons where they don't you kind of just have to be like ready to accept that as part of what having young kids looks like um, but all of those different things are pretty tried and true for me the first four months of Rosie's life again were really hard to get her to sleep independently because of her colic and her stomach pain so a lot of the time I didn't even really try I just did a lot of carrier naps and when I felt like she was more at a place where she was ready and could benefit from some of these different sleep habits kind of around like five months I started introducing them more pointedly and she is now getting a lot better at independent sleeping and will do at least a couple naps a day where she is just solo that are like an hour or more long so they do work over time you just have to be very consistent I feel like I'm getting sweaty and we are getting into some controversial topics so I'm about to get sweatier I had an overwhelming number of questions come in all about discipline and you guys wanting to hear more about our philosophies on discipline, how we discipline our kids, whether or not we spank. And I think if anything, it was just all the more incentive for me to like actually make a dedicated video to this, which is something that I've honestly been kind of avoiding. Not because we don't discipline our kids, but mostly because I honestly don't even really know how to put into words the way that we do it. And for example, someone asked what my parent philosophy was, whether it was like gentle parenting or old school parenting. And to be completely honest with you, I do not subscribe to any parenting philosophies or strategies that are advertised today. When it comes to the way that I raise and shape my children, I am trying to parent out of the fruits of the spirit. If you are not familiar with what the fruits of the spirit are, they are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. So, I mean, it's a pretty high bar. But essentially, these are the characteristics of Jesus. And scripture tells us that when we are in step with the spirit, that we will see this fruit of the spirit in our lives when we are in a moment of tension or stress or crisis when you are close to the holy spirit what can come out of your heart in those moments is actually patience and kindness and joy as opposed to frustration and anger and sharp words and so as i raise and shape my kids each day it is my hope and my prayer that the overflow of what is inside of me will come out as those fruits of the spirit in these moments of parenting and shaping that but also the authority to recognize that he has placed my husband and i in charge of shaping these children and helping them to become real functioning members of society someday and so two of the big things that i look for in my children every Every day are obedience and respect not only for myself and for their dad but also for other people in the world but although I do stay relatively calm and kind in my words towards our kids when I'm disciplining them I do also run a pretty tight ship and require obedience not after the 17th time of asking but after the first time of asking so again obedience and respect are the two things that I'm really looking for I try and parent out of the fruits of the spirit and those are the things that I want to see out of my kids 
kids as well. How has your approach to motherhood evolved as you have grown and added more kids? I think the biggest thing on this is that there is so much more intuition now and so much less research. I feel like I was Googling literally everything as a first time mom and just like second guessing everything, feeling like I needed to have other people's experiences and other people's philosophies kind of like validate mine. I have grace for myself because as a first time mom, you're a first time mom. You've really just like never done this before. But one of the cool things about adding more kids is that you do just develop this sense of confidence in what you're doing and who you are as a mom. And I've realized that your intuition is generally right the first time anyways. Are your children picky eaters and how do you introduce new foods if they refuse to eat? None of our kids are picky eaters. I feel like we have gotten really lucky in that sense, but also I think a huge element of this is that with all of our kids, I do the 100 foods before one challenge. So it's basically just a way to hold yourself accountable to being a little bit more diverse in the foods that you eat in your house and expose your kids to, especially if you're also going to do baby led weaning. So with each of our kids, I have tried to, like it says, introduce a hundred different foods before one. And every single time I thought like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so easy, but very quickly realized that there are literally a few things that we eat every single week. And a lot of the time we don't kind of venture out of that. So it's a fun challenge to kind of help you get out of your comfort zone a little bit. But I also do think that your eating habits really do influence your kids' eating habits. So are you a picky eater? If your kids see you being picky and only eating certain things most of the time, I feel like it is quite hard to get them to experiment as well. And another thing that I think really helps us is that I don't offer other options to our kids. So if I put something in front of them for dinner at night and they tell me that they don't want to eat it, I don't make anything else. I don't have like a backup stash of like chicken fingers in the freezer. One of the things that will help them to not go to bed hungry that night is that I will usually always offer some sort of safe food with every meal. So at least one thing on their plate is something that I know that they typically do really like and enjoy eating. That way there's a little bit less pressure on them loving every single thing on their plate. But for whatever reason, if they're just not into it, I don't make another meal and they will eat what they will eat from that plate. Look who has decided to join us. Did Jude outgrow his dairy allergy? Currently have a 12 month old and meals are so hard. Yes, Jude did outgrow his dairy allergy, praise God. He had a cow's milk protein allergy. So the instruction at that point was to remove all dairy from our diet and basically for the next like a little bit over a year, our whole family became dairy free and it was very, very challenging. But the guidelines with F pies are that you want to keep the allergen out of their diet until age two. And then you can kind of reintroduce and see if they've gotten better at all. And, and essentially a couple of months before Jude turned two, he accidentally ate something that had baked milk in it. So very low amount of milk, but he didn't react. And that was like the first time in almost a year that he had had no dairy at all. And so what our allergist had said is that if you've seen no reaction from that you can kind of keep introducing and building up in the intensity I guess and just see how he does and so we kept introducing from there and he continued to not react now he's at a point where a little over age two he's able to have all dairy he can have an ice cream cone and his body is totally fine which is such a gift so we are really hoping for the same for Rosie this might be personal but how is your libido postpartum I always struggle with a low one while breastfeeding yes breastfeeding is wild for that Jude was our long Longest baby that I like exclusively breastfed and I literally went to my naturopath at one point like what's going on here like things are not working like they used to and basically she was just like yeah this is one of the natural side effects of breastfeeding and like there are a few things that you could maybe try supplement wise to kind of like help to offset it but for the most part this is just like a natural byproduct of breastfeeding and that sucked just remind yourself that it's not gonna be forever and it is just a season but I've noticed the complete 180 with all but I've noticed the complete 180 with all of that so much faster this time around because I did end up weaning with Rosie around five months because of all the food allergy things. And I feel like that has been one unexpected benefit of formula feeding this time around. I will literally just look at my husband standing there and I'm like, you are so hot right now. <laughs> it's actually a problem. On that note, someone did ask, how are you feeling about formula feeding? Sometimes the guilt gets to me. Oh my gosh, I have so many thoughts. I feel like transitioning into formula feeding, I was very ready for it, mostly just just because I have been breastfeeding or pregnant for literally three years straight. And so when we got to a place where it was like, 
she's losing weight like this is not really working it's been such an uphill battle for the last four months trying to make it work with her i mostly just felt relief at the thought of being done but i will say there are a couple of moments where i've just been like oh it would be really nice if we were still able to breastfeed i think mostly just seeing a lot of my other friends that are breastfeeding their baby still at this age i just remember that being like such a sweet and special time with both viv and jude but to not be able to still do it with rosie is hard sometimes she had her first cold last week and that was hard too because when you're breastfeeding you're giving your baby antibodies that are kind of like medicine for them and fighting their illness and i feel like she took a lot longer to recover from the cold because of the fact that i was formula feeding and not giving her those antibodies through breast milk but she'll still develop those antibodies it's not the end of the world it was just one of those moments where i was like oh i kind of miss still being able to do this sometimes if you let your kids watch shows or movies what are you okay with and what do you say no to when it comes to screen time i definitely do have limited limits in our house and there is a lot of moderation that happens with it. I'm not a proponent of the belief that you should just let your kids have unlimited access because they're going to have it someday anyway and they need to figure out how to kind of like live with it and manage it. I feel like it's our job as parents to help put in place the different limits and restrictions because toddlers don't have a lot of willpower. They don't have a lot of self-control. That being said, I don't think that all screen time is bad, although I think that there are things that are a lot better than others. Will not catch me playing Coco Melon in this house. I also feel like from my own childhood, I have memories and associations with certain shows that are just like cozy and special fond memories for me, like watching Little Bear when I was sick at home on the couch or gathering together with my family and watching the same Christmas movies every year. So I think that there are elements Elements of screen time that are not only educational for kids but can also be edifying as they grow but I do not give my kids screen time every day and when they do get screen time I try and make sure that it's capped at about an hour do you think you will have a larger age gap between Rosie and baby number four yes how has having a colic baby impacted you wanting more kids after oh my gosh I feel like I really did struggle with this when we were in the thick of it I have always loved her of course even in the depths of the colic but there were definitely a few moments where and I looked at each other like we could be done like this could be the end of it especially like knowing that it's possible that we could go through that again definitely like shapes your perception of the baby stage and I feel so deeply for people that have one and then don't keep going because that's all that they have known is just hard her experience is not enough for me to say that I'm going to be done now but there were moments where I really almost was a lot of people asked how we knew we wanted a third baby and like more babies in general and I feel like we've just always envisioned having a big family and when I think about like what I want our dinner table to look like in the future I want it to be full I want it to be full of my kids and their spouses and their kids there has been a trend on social media recently where it starts with the two parents and then it just kind of keeps expanding as all of their kids and then their spouses and then their kids surround them and I'm like that is so cool to just see how big it goes and it's all because it started with two people that loved each other and wanted to build something beautiful and I just feel like that is Jared and I's heart as well what is your go-to at home workout recommendation. I am still using train well and I love it. I shared a little bit more about that in a video that I will link here. It is like a fitness app that you can do from home anywhere, any time of day. And you have a trainer that kind of walks through the workouts with you and keeps you accountable. It has been so great because I really do feel like I would have fallen off so many times if it wasn't for Heidi, my trainer, just like checking in with me and literally being like, so are you going to work out this week? So I have just loved the accountability and the flexibility of that and I feel like it's really kept me going in this season. Do you and your husband feel settled in your current home or have thoughts of moving? To be honest with you, I would be happy to die in one spot. Like bury me in the backyard of this house. I would be so happy to never move. I am such a homebody and I don't really love change so I am very content here. My husband grew up in a motor home traveling the United States with his parents who were missionaries and then he moved to Thailand and so his life has just been full of moving and newness and so if anyone in our family like has their eye on like what new opportunities are and where we could go it's definitely Jared although he does also very much love this house and we are both kind of aligned on this being like our kids childhood home he I think will always have 
just one eye open, kind of checking on what's going on in the market. What is the biggest myth about motherhood that you found untrue? That it's all bad and that your life is over. I have not lived that at all. I feel like my kids are the absolute best ever. They are so much fun. They're hilarious. I love spending my days with them and my life is just beginning. This is the last question that I will answer today and it is knowing what you know now, how would you have better prepared your marriage for a parenthood? My answer to this is probably going to rub some people the wrong way, but it is to not put your kids ahead of your husband in terms of like the order of priority in your mind and in your heart. I really do think that scripture outlines for us what our priority should be in order of it being like first our relationship with God and then our relationship with our spouse and then with our kids. Everything kind of flows out of that order when everything is in its right place. And I'm not saying that it is a bad thing if you look at what you've done over the course of a day and most of what you have done is just like take care of your kids and think about your kids because in reality that's what a lot of motherhood will look like. Life. But because so much of motherhood is that like every single day task completion and moving things forward for the kids and for your house and all of this stuff, it's very easy for your husband to fall down the priority list. And that is how over time you end up just becoming roommates. It's because you've kind of put your kids and your job taking care of them ahead of your relationship with your spouse. And that's just a dangerous place to be. So I would say to make sure that you prioritize that relationship between you guys as husband and wife and continue to prioritize that. I just posted a video all about this. And the reality is that when you can get that right and you can keep your marriage strong, the benefits for your kids just flow out of that as well. Well, I am going to wrap this video up here. Thank you guys so much for watching and for submitting all of your awesome questions. I feel like there are still so many that I didn't go through, but this video is already way too long for me to keep going. If you guys want to be able to submit questions in the future, you can follow me over on Instagram at Beth Grace Moore. I would love to have you over there as well. Before I go, I wanted to remind you that if any of you are interested in checking out the natural cycles app for period tracking or planning or preventing pregnancy that if you head to the link in my description box and use that code beth at checkout you can save 15 percent off of that annual subscription and they will send you a free thermometer so thank you again to natural cycles thank you guys so much for being here and until my next video i love you guys i'm praying for you guys and i will see you soon it is my bye bye bye, -bye.